no, 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 no. I don't know who needs to hear this video, but play it. So I just want to say this, Haiti. Don't come for me, Haitians. Don't f come for me because I f with y'all. A tale of murder, torture, betrayal. This is the search for the secrets of the lost tribe. Welcome back to my office. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the history of the Dominican Republic. Why? During the whole Black Lives Matter movement that's been going on, I've been seeing a lot of Dominicans really think they're not black. That doesn't make no sense to me. You're black. Okay, so boom. As far as the history that I'm gonna cover, I'm just gonna talk about like from when Christopher Columbus allegedly discovered it till 1844 when Dominican Republic um, got its independence from Haiti. From there, I'm gonna stop. If you guys want me to keep going, I. I mean, I will, just let me know. So boom, I'm talking about like the 1400s right now. Dominican Republic, like the whole island itself, was called Hispaniola. At the time, the Tainos lived in Hispaniola. Hispaniola was the second largest island of the West Indies in the Caribbean Sea. Now, the Tainos, they originated from Venezuela and they spread through the Caribbean. Jamaica, Cuba, Puerto Rico, the Bahamas, DR, Haiti, but in that time, Hispaniola. So the Taino people, the language that they spoke was actually Taino. Taino was what the Taino spoke, but Taino was just like a... Oh, fuck it. Damn. How do I say it? Like a branch of like the whole Araquan language that they spoke in the South, right? There's some words today that actually came from the Taino language, like um, barbecue, hammock, tobacco. Those were actual words that they used. So the Tainos had the island split into five little, we're gonna call them cities, into five little cities. The five cities were Marien, Magua, Maguana, Jaragua, and Iwe. I know Iwe is still a place today in DR. And those five cities, what we're gonna call them, were ran by five caciques. Caciques were kings. And the five kings were, I'm gonna again but show these names. I can't even pronounce this one. Guacanaharix, Guarionex, Caonabo, Bohechio, y Cayacoa. Those are the names of the five kings that ruled the five cities in La Quisqueya when the Tainos lived there, right? Boom. Because they were near the Pacific, their main focus was agriculture. So that's what they did. Their religion was polytheistic, probably, again, pronouncing that wrong, I'm sorry, which means that they believe in multiple gods. They didn't have just one god, which explains a lot with Dominicans. That makes so much sense. But they believed in multiple gods, but their main god was the god of abundance. And that name is mad long, and I'm not gonna pronounce this, I'm gonna put it on the screen. So boom, here comes Christopher Columbus. He was working for the Spanish people, for the Spaniards. So Ferdinand basically. and Isabella decided to help fund three ships for a voyage. Saw Columbus as a means to compete against Portugal's success. The Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria set sail on August 3rd, 1492. But the natives were really called the Taino. Trade began between the two parties. However, some of them wore gold as jewelry. Columbus was hungry for gold. So basically, back. Spain was like, Yo, right around the world and see if you could find <laughs> that we could take over. So boom, here comes Chris pulling up in his little boat or whatever, his little ship, his little people, whatever. And he somehow, some way in the 1490s ends up in the Caribbean. Hmm. So he pulls up in 1493 during his third voyage, Christopher Columbus, he reached La Isabela. La Isabela was in the northeast of the shore of like DR. And it was doing bad because of hunger and sickness and diseases and people were dying. So Christopher Columbus was like, whoop. Like, whoop. Like, no, no, do. What the fuck? It was like, ooh, I'm gonna take over these niggas. They already dying anyway, so I might as well. So he came in, boom, and he was trying to be slick and he took and he tried to um, you know, take over the land. But then Caonavo, which was the king or the cacique from Maguana, was like, No! Stupid, I'm not gonna let you get the chance. And he attacked Christopher Columbus on January 3rd of 1943. Like he was shooting arrows, he kidnapped his um Christopher Columbus people. There was a ship that came back to pick up my son Chris to go back to Spain. Caonabo kidnapped that whole ship, that whole crew, shut that whole down. 
stupid fast forward to 1495 this was christopher columbus last trip in um oh fuck it in dr also known as la española at the time and that's when other caciques joined caonabo which formed the battle of la vega real it was like a hundred thousand dinos but they lost because spain had weapons the chief was angered by the arrogance of these invaders and soon fighting broke out to intimidate the chief columbus captured three of his captains and beheaded them in public this enraged the Tainos and disturbed many of the Spanish. To produce more profit for the king and queen, Columbus suggested starting a slave trade. Without waiting for a response, he seized over 500 natives and sent them to Spain. Most of the remaining natives fought against this injustice, so Columbus unleashed terror on them. Once defeated, they were forced to pay tributes of gold to the Spanish. It was worse than slavery. People who didn't find enough were punished brutally. Fast forward to 1496, because they lost that battle last year, the Spaniards went and built the capital, Santo Domingo, and that's where the first cathedral was ever built. This is Santo Domingo, the oldest city in the Americas. Here, Columbus established the first European outpost in the New World. These are the foundations of Imperial Spain, once the greatest empire on earth. In the people today, the blood of two races mingles. The Spaniards, who conquered the island, and the Africans, they brought here in chains. But where are the children of that first tribe? In between the war and the, by the cathedral was being built and Santo Domingo was being built, the capital and all that, almost a hundred thousand Tainos died from like diseases, starvation, poison. A lot was suicide. They were poisoning themselves, they were starving themselves, and they were jumping off cliffs. That went on for like five years. See, it was so crazy that one of the Spanish conquistadors that was there, which was like one of the like soldiers from like the Spanish army. An obscure book by a Spanish priest named Bartolome de las Casas. He arrived in Hispaniola in 1500 and in 1510 became the first priest ordained in the New World. In the annals of Imperial Spain, the conquest of Hispaniola is a tale of glory. But Las Casas tells a darker story about the fate of the Tainos, the good people. He, at the time, turned Christian during everything that was going on. He basically went on Twitter at the time and wrote some that exposed the Spaniards for what they truly were. And I'm going to read a piece of it because I have it here. It says, Into this land of meek outcasts, there came some Spaniards who immediately behaved like raven wild beasts, wolves, tigers, or lions that have been starved for many days. These Spaniards have behaved no other way during these past 40 years, down to the present time, and they are still acting like reverend beasts, killing, terrorizing, affecting, torturing, destroying the native people. Doing all this against most whatever so basically he went on twitter he was like yo these spanish niggas is bugging they're out here killing people torturing people bothering people taking over these people's native land for the last 40 years and they still doing it like what the f is going on like that's basically what he said so fast forward to 1497 so remember the battle of la vega real that happened with the other kings that got together and they attacked this um christopher columbus so in 1497 they did it again and this time the spain caught them but they caught specifically the two caciques the two kings that was like the lead of everything what the f writing me on twitter the two caciques who were like in like the lead of it all which was guarionex for magua and caonabo for maguana those two caciques those two kings were caught and they really never said what they did with them like after the spanish caught the two kings they disappeared and nobody really knew what happened they say that caonabo died from rage that doesn't even make no sense what literally when i was doing research and i read that line how the f does someone die from rage like that nigga was mad tight and he passed out Yo, what are you talking about man well, i'm out man that nigga's tripping honestly i believe it because that y'all was doing back in the day that probably had me so tight that i passed out and they say that guardio niggas died drowned allegedly so one of them died drowned and the other one died of rage like no y'all niggas took them and y'all killed y'all probably ate them y'all probably sold them who knows after that, the king from Magua, 
Garionex, I can't pronounce his name, I'm sorry. He had a wife. And after he died, his wife, Anacaona, that was her name, she moved to Jaragua, where her brother, Bohechio, he was the cacique, he was the king. So remember, her husband died, so she packs up Anacaona and goes to her brother's kingdom, Jaragua, which is his name was Bohechio. So what she mainly did over there, she refuge enslaved Tainos because remember by this time the Tainos and the Spanish people were living on the island but it was like the way we live in America today where the f***ing white people are terrorizing us like you think you're free but you're not really free by this time they were coexisting on the island but you know Spain was ruling them like Spain made the laws which meant that they were Taino slaves so when Anacaona moved to her brother's kingdom what she did was refugee enslaved Tainos and African slaves now the African slaves came in 1501 when the Spanish monarchs like the kings or whatever the rulers they was like yo y'all can bring black people to the yard like why not F it, let's let's have all these niggas working together so in 1501 the first ship of african slaves came in and they came from portugal in 1503 the spanish people catch anacaona the one who's refugeeing the slaves and the tainos they kill her and they kill a whole bunch of africans and a whole bunch of tainos so i just want you to see i'm just going to stop right here real quick so i want you to see how you us the dominican dominicano nosotros we were treated the same as black people we were both slaves the white people the spanish people they were white like the spanish people from spain they don't look like me they look like white people like if you see a spanish person from spain walking around in new york city you'll think that they're a white person until they open their mouth and you'll hear the spanish accent their spanish accent but I just want you to see how Tainos, Dominicans, and the black slaves that came from everywhere else, we were once all on Dominican Republic, slaving away, picking the same cotton, doing the same thing. So you're black. Anyways, so fast forward, between 1510 and 1516, there were 250 slaves that were shipped in. And they, I mean, they were coming from all over the place at this point. I'm screaming into the mic, I'm sorry. Dominican Republic became like the administrative hub for all the countries and all the other colonies. It's that at this point, by the 1510s, 15, 1515s, 15, by this time, meaning that Dominican Republic handled basically like all the paperwork and all the legwork for all the other countries and all the other colonies like including the Americas which is what they were called at the time so in 1517 some popped off this is what starts getting juicy because I need you guys to pay attention you protesters like I get it like let's get out there and protest with the signs and make hashtags and retweets and arrest these officers yes but I want you to really listen to how niggas handle this that we're dealing with today back in the day and they got done apparently because dominican republic is obviously standing today as dominican republic and haiti is standing as haiti in so 1517 the taino leader enriquillo he was from the mountain right he initiated a war with the spanish people you know what he did he gathered a whole bunch of african people listen people you guys are listening dominicans están escuchando enriquillo he grabbed a whole bunch of african people and a whole bunch of tainos he made like an army and they just ran through all the spanish land like the farms the properties they destroyed shit they burned shit they freed all the slaves they took slaves back home on fire burned it to the ground done canceled finished like again the dominicans and the africans together so when that popped off spain was like uh, 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 now so they sent they sent barrio nuevo <laughs> okay but he was to go in spain or whatever but no when he pulled up and he seen what he was dealing with he was like all right we can negotiate because the spanish people were low on resources so they was like all right let's talk let's negotiate that was that in 15 in 1517 but that wasn't the end of that just i'll i'll touch back on that later in the 1520s while all of this was going on the caribbean sea was raided by the french pirates at this time i guess pirates back then were like gangs today i might sound dumb but i don't know like that's how i correlated in my mind pirates was like gang members so in the 1520s because of the french pirate invasion that's where the haitians came in so i just want to say this haiti don't come for me haitians don't come for me because i with y'all we we ride together we've been here together since the beginning we went through it all together so don't come for me haitians but y'all wasn't on the island shooting with us at the gym don't argue with me 
look at the history you guys came in during the french pirate invasion but then from there you know what i'm saying then you know we met up at the gym and we shot a couple times but yeah wasn't always shooting at the gym so that was in the 1520s french pirates they're like Ooh, what's going on over there they sneak in now we got some french people and then this is where the haitians come in and then just to like fast forward a little bit in 1541 they built a wall and that's where the division initially came between the dominicans and the haitians from that wall in 1541 that they built 1521 was the first ever rebellion where slaves had weapons in 1521 that happened in dr this history is important for the both of us for the for my black people and my dominican people like we both need to realize and recognize the fact the facts is that popped off and started off in dr for all of us period okay so in 1521 boom africans rebel this time they got weapons they're not playing this happened on christmas eve they said christmas all that your gifts your dinner time your family time 200 slaves escaped from diego's columbus um plantation they marched and as they went they freed slaves from other plantations they freed slaves from nagua from san cristobal from bani which are all three places are still standing in dr till this day and they marched together they burned plantations together they killed spanish people together and they went from plantation to plantation on christmas eve the africans and the dominicans they were even indian people on the island they even had indians slaved in the yard so india you you're in this too once christopher columbus heard, heard popping off and he gathered his weak niggas he went he attacked them obviously we lost the war and the spanish people eventually ended up actually catching some of the rebels and they executed them publicly by lynching them and some of them escaped but they caught most of them and they killed most of them like publicly lynching them hanging them like in front of everybody what do you gain from that so after all that happened in 1533 finally remember that first battle between the nigger from the mountain and riquillo and barrio nuevo from spain they finally met met up to negotiate in 1533 they met up in the lake in Jaragua, which today is known as Enriquillo Lake. They met there and they came up with an agreement where Barrio Nuevo promised Enriquillo and his people some land and some freedom so they could be free. Which is like, okay, like I get it. But you see, this is what these white people do. He went ahead and he slapped a little bit of land um to Enriquillo and he slapped like, all right, y'all could be free. Like, no, f out of here. That's not the point of it. It's not, it's, I don't want you to give me a little piece of freedom and you to tell me that I'm free. I need this whole to stop where you try to tell my people if we're free or not nigga we've been free bef before y'all got here like what are you talking about okay so that was the 1500s by the end of the 1500s spain had control over dominican republic but like barely because just going left like like they barely had control because clearly they had a couple of rebellion wars they um they had a whole bunch of uh, pirates dutches and french invasions and a whole bunch of they even caught their own people in 1605 they were carrying out illegal trade with the dutch the dutch was the op you can only imagine the type of that was going on at the time so also during the end of the 1500s like the 1590s there was a new war that spain had to worry about which was with the english and that war was going on in europe so they were too busy fighting the war dealing with their snake ass people and then trying to control dr at the same time dr was like in a frenzy because they basically abandoned dr because they were too busy dealing with all the other so in 1664 the french came in they were like whoa these things not worry about the northern coast so we're just gonna take over it boom these were the french they came from tortuga island and then the spanish tried to get them out they attacked them a few times but after three decades of trying to fight them off the western side which is haiti of the island they just like yeah, all right, yeah, I can have it, like in the 1700s now we got the haitians now we got the spanish people we got the tainos we got some indians we got some black people this is on the R. we got the military base now we got the english coming for us we got the spanish coming for us like everybody coming for us now this is where dominican republic divides the west side which was like the haitian side but at the time it was french was thriving they became the wealthiest colony while dr just sunk and got poor so fast forward to 1791 the urban families like the working class like they were not rich but they was not poor so they fled they left haiti because the working class left the economy went down this is in haiti the 
West Side at the time, ran by the French. Um, the Spanish people in 1743, Charles VI from Spain decides like, Yo, I'm about to sneak attack Haiti so I could get that land back. Because remember, Haiti fought for three decades for that land, and the Spanish was like, Ah, y'all can have it. But because then they was lacking in 1793, they was like, Yo, we're about to sneak attack them. They they went ahead. Charles VI he attacked Haiti and they lost. And as karma, they had to give up Dominican Republic up to Haiti. And that is how Haiti had control over Dominican Republic because there was a point where the whole island was controlled by Haiti. And it was bad though because they were like, you can't speak Spanish, anything Spanish. You can't do anything Taino from your heritage. Like nigga, you have to, y'all have to be Haitian. We're French. We're this. You're following this law. So by October of 1795, Dominicans, the East Side, they find out that they're being taken over by Haiti. Well, at that time, France, they were being taken over by France and they were given a year to decide if they wanted to stay under the new like management basically or if they wanted to leave the options were cuba puerto rico or venezuela where they would be sent to facilities for a new star i can only imagine those facilities so about 125,000 um africans and dinos left um from the arm so boom niggas leave france is a new leader in 1796 um hispaniola the east side the spanish side was attacked by british like was just coming coming for the art like the dinos was just trying to chill damn we ain't doing nothing over here we just got a little corn a little yuca a little nyame like why the british the spanish the french everybody wanted us like damn i know we cute like but damn and then in 1805 finally the haitian invade santo domingo which was the capital so by this point it was no dominican republic it was just Haiti. In 1809, the British invade Santo Domingo. So again, and then later that year, the Spanish they gained control of Santo Domingo again because basically, um, the Spanish side went into economic ruin. Yes, the French owned the whole, but they were only really focusing on the west side. Niggas wasn't really focused on what the east side was doing. They just wanted the land to have it. So eventually, Spain was like, "All right, nah, give me the east side back, y'all bugging." The Spanish population in the east side grew. A few more. Mulattoes. This was all between 1809 and 1821. A group of mulattoes, which are a mix of white and black people, formed a rebellion against the Spanish people. Which crazy part about this whole rebellion was that they wanted the Spanish people to give up the East back to Haiti. They was like this nigga we'd rather be under haiti so the two mulattoes leaders who led this rebellion were jose leocaido and pedro seda and pedro enriquez those three guys and eventually they were caught on the day of the attack and they were hung dismembered and burned in oil like you can't just put niggas in jail you couldn't just like yo like this is what i mean that's unnecessary abusing power you're doing too much by 1815 simon bolivar comes to haiti with his new followers and they formed another rebellion a whole bunch of leaders from the east side from dr they got together and it was like nah yeah, y'all niggas is bugging, y'all throwing us back and forth, the economy keep doing bad, everybody else is thriving, but us. At this point, Simon Bolivar was like, nah, we want to stand ourselves, we want to run ourselves. So eventually, we lost that war. So in the process of the Dominican leaders, independent, Jean-Pierre from Haiti um, sneaks attack the capital of Dominican Republic with like 10,000 men. Then they lost, because they did that, they had to give the east side up to Spain. So here we go back again with Dominican Republic being in control by the Spanish people. Fast forward to July 6th of 1838. Here comes Juan Pablo Duarte, which is a park in San Francisco Macorí, in DR, where I'm from, called Parque Duarte, in honor of him. Along with other people, started Lo Trinitario. Well, they call it La Trinitaria. So Juan Pablo Duarte formed La Trinitaria, July 16, 1838. And, you know, they basically fought a war against Haiti for the independence of the Dominican Republic because by this point, they were tired of it. Like, they were not dealing with that being passed and forth between the French, the Haitian, Spanish, and British, the niggas attacking us left and right, our people are dying, like, no. So then that's that. If you guys really want me to go and like make a whole video specifically on like the independence of the Dominican Republic and how like it happened, let me know. Because if I get into that, that's gonna be like a whole another 40 minutes. But basically that's what happened. If you guys put caught anything from what I said, it's just basically that if it wasn't for the African slaves and a little bit of those Indian slaves and the Tainos that got together and rebelled those few times and for all those people that died and got and cooked in oil if it wasn't for all of that dominican republic wouldn't be dominican republic haiti wouldn't be haiti okay all the caribbean wouldn't be the caribbean that it is because basically christopher columbus came into the caribbean took over land where 
people were already living if our people back in the day didn't stand up for themselves and for what they believed in like imagine dominican republic today mad white people or haiti mad white people or like cuba mad white people like it wouldn't be what it is today you know what i mean so just take this history into and like just let it marinate i don't know smoke a blunt play it again play it watch it a few times and just try to think what we can do in 2020 to make a change protesting is cool yes march retweet whatever the case may be it really needs to change like all this nice shit is done i'm not saying loot walmart and loot businesses because that doesn't help anything what the fuck do i gain from leaving my house and going to target and stealing some towels and some curtains out of pocket for that shit way out of pocket what do you gain from that what my house look nice now no we gotta get done we gotta overthrow the people that we need to overthrow and we need to expose that we need to expose period and if niggas gotta shed blood niggas gotta shed blood that's it with that being said i have to go guys dying my ride is on the way i hope you enjoyed this video if you guys like this one i will do the history of the bloods in the cribs don't get me started because just like the trinitarios the bloods in the cribs were initially started for something else and today was turned into something else but thank you for coming to my office thank you for watching this video bye